Greetings, Pokéfans! Michael here, and as of making this video, there are nine Pokémon type combos that have never been seen on any Pokémon or any form. Now, while it's fun to design new Pokémon or forms that could fit those type combos, what if we didn't have to? Today, I'll be going through all of the unused type combos and figuring out which existing Pokémon could make sense with those typings. I'll be starting with Rock Ghost, because this video was inspired by a short by Dead Bedspread, in which he talks about how ridiculous it is that we don't already have a Ghost Rock type Pokemon. I really liked his video, and I wanted to take his thoughts and expand them to all of the unused type combos. Of all the unused type combos, I think Rock Ghost has the most potential existing Pokemon, the first of which is Sableye. It doesn't take a keen eye to notice that Sableye has gems on its body. In fact, it has keen eyes that are gems. Its freaking mega form is holding an enormous one. It likes gems. Almost all of Sableye's Pokedex entries discuss how this happens because it eats rocks and gems, which then become a part of its body. Sableye digs the ground with sharpened claws to find rocks that it eats. Substances in the eaten rocks crystallize and rise up to the Pokemon's body surface. It hides in the darkness of caves. Its diet of gems has transformed its eyes into gemstones. It digs through the ground with its hard claws and crunches down gems with its thick, pointy teeth. Carbink is its favorite food. Gems are rocks, and Pokemon backs this up considering Carbink and Deancey are rock-type Pokemon. So if a Pokemon is eating rocks and rock type Pokemon, and then has rocks grow on its body, how is it not a rock type? Sableye even learns multiple rock type moves like Power Gem and Rock Tomb, and it should frankly learn more. Now one could argue that it should be Dark Rock instead of Ghost Rock, but allow me to offer its Ruby Dex entry as a counterpoint. Sableye lead quiet lives deep inside caverns. They are feared, however, because these Pokemon are thought to steal the spirits of people when their eyes burn with a sinister glow in the darkness. Dark type makes sense due to its nature, but so does ghost type, since stealing the spirits of people is a pretty ghosty thing to do. In other words, dark, ghost, and rock all make sense, which means a combo of two of them, such as ghost and rock, also makes sense. The next ghost rock type is also currently a ghost dark type, Spiritomb. It's literally bound to a rock. Now to be fair, it doesn't use the rock much, and considering it was bound to it as punishment, it would likely be glad to be rid of it, unlike Sableye who seeks rocks out. So while I don't think the case for it is as strong as it is for Sableye, it's there, and it learns rock tomb. Next are Galarian Corsola and Cursola. And I'll say up front, these two not being Ghost Rock type is probably the most outrageous thing I will discuss in this video. But the most outrageous thing of all is you not being subscribed to the channel. <laughs> that was clever, I just came up with that. Original Corsola, or Jotoan, Jotonian? I don't know the official term here, is based on coral and coral reefs. Now, while the coral organisms are organic life forms, the reefs are formed when the coral polyps secrete calcium carbonate that builds up over time. According to Wikipedia, calcium carbonate is a common substance found in rocks, as the minerals calcite and aragonite, most notably in chalk and limestone. Coral polyps are alive, but coral reefs are rocks, Hence why Corsola is a water rock type. Ha ha, it is I, Grunted Boy. Hey man, why are you holding a fly swatter? I've been pursued by one for days now and it could appear at any moment. Honestly, my sanity would be completely gone if I couldn't play Watcher of Realms, the sponsor of today's video. This next gen fantasy RPG is on another level in every category. Its audio visual effects are insane and immersive, Top of the line for RPG games. All of the 100 plus collectible heroes look amazing, and it's so fun getting into their backstories and the lore of the world as a whole. Sounds like a fantastic game I definitely wanna play. Wait, hold on, one fly? For several days? How have you not killed it? It's a, uh, it's a skill issue. But I do get to flex my skills in Watcher of Realms. The user-friendly and deeply strategic gameplay is super fun. I love fighting the menacing bosses on each level and teaming up with guild partners to fight the dragon and increase my rank. The refreshingly diverse RPG elements make the whole game experience 10 out of 10. It also has multiple game modes, such as the Tide mode, which I find very interesting. 
If you want, Grunty Boy, I could help you kill the fly once I finish this video, and then we can play Watcher of Realms? Oh, I'd love to play with you, but my hunt must remain solitary. In the meantime, though, you can download Watcher of Realms by clicking the link in the description below or scanning the QR code on screen. They're also doing this really cool launch event where you can earn some amazing prizes, and the link to that is in the description below. Perfect, I'll do that right away. And best of luck on your hunt. Thank you, you know I... It's back! It's back! Yeah! Yeah! I will get you, small demon! Ta-ta, by the way. Ah! But then we move on to Galarian Corsola and Cursola, which are based on bleached coral. This occurs when the water temperatures get too high, and the Zoo that is very hard to say, uh, but it's basically like an algae, I think. Within coral tissue, start producing a substance that is toxic to coral. The coral polyps then expel the algae, leaving them looking more transparent and revealing the white calcium carbonate skeleton below. Galarian Corsola and Cursola are ghost type because unfortunately bleached coral usually becomes dead coral. However, they're just ghost type, which makes no sense whatsoever. The coral reefs, the calcium carbonate is still there. That's what you're seeing. You can even see this on their bodies. They have transparent parts, but then also solid hard parts. You know what the hard parts are? That's the coral reef left behind which is rock. And as an added bonus, why don't I list all the rock type moves that Cursula can learn? Ancient power, power gem, rock slide, sandstorm, rock tomb, rock blast, stone edge, stealth rock, head smash, and meteor beam. Now, I don't think a Pokemon's move set should be the sole explanation for why it could be a different type. Pokemon can have some wide move pools, but that is 10 rock type moves, 10. These two Pokemon are just on another level. Like, Sableye would make a lot of sense as a Ghost Rock type, but these two should have been Ghost Rock type. Now, the next batch of potential Ghost Rock type Pokemon are not as straightforward, but they're still worthy to discuss. And one of them is Houndstone. It's got stone in its name. Now, to be fair, we don't know if the protuberance is made of rock, but it is inspired by a gravestone. Also, Grievert has a candle on its head and it is not a fire type, nor should it be, but I mean, come on, Houndstone has Sand Rush as its main ability. And also it's made of bones, which rhymes with stones. And heck, all the bone moves are, well, they're, they're actually ground type. And, and Houndstone, its whole thing is digging itself into the ground and then popping up, so. Actually, maybe it should just be a ghost ground type. But you can see why I got confused, right? Like, Pokemon's distinction between rock and ground is unusual. Most forms of media that involve elements or types or somehow just have one for both of these things, called Earth. For example, in Avatar, Earthbenders can control rocks, dirt, sand, crystals, and even metal. But I should say, I understand metal, or steel, which is one specific type of metal, just call it metal type, being a different type in Pokemon because its properties are very different from dirt and rocks. Determining whether a Pokemon should be rock or ground type can get a bit confusing, but how they seem to have divided it is that the Pokemon ends up ground type instead of rock if it does a lot of digging, is explicitly soil or dirt based, or involves a softer earth material like mud or sand. But then clay is a weird middle ground. It is a type of soil, but it can be hardened into a solid material that one could define as a rock. However, the Pokemon made partly or wholly of clay are all ground types. Those Pokemon are Baltoy, Claydol, Galarian Yamask, Runarigus, Golet, and Golurk. Pokemon has evidently decided that even if the soil hardens into something that is effectively a rock, it is still soil and therefore it's a ground type Pokemon. And they're consistent about this even when the Pokemon is not based on soil. So Mudsdale has hardened mud on its body, but it's still a ground type, not a rock type. However, if we just were to change that characterization and say, oh, if it's hard earth, it's a rock, then we would end up with several more rock type Pokemon. That would include Golet, Golurk, Galarian Yamask, and Runarigus, thus making them all ghost rock types. One final note for ghost rock is that I've seen some people say that Cophagrigus could be ghost rock type because sarcophaguses were made of stone. However, they could also be made of wood or metal. 
Plus, the Pokedex explicitly states that its body is covered in gold. In my opinion, Kofagrigus would make a lot more sense as a ghost steel type. Or ghost metal type, a name that makes so much more sense, don't limit yourself to one kind of metal. Now for the next type combo, Fire Fairy. But before I can dive into that, I first have to talk about Fairy and Psychic. Much like Ground and Rock, two types that feel overlapping at times are Psychic and Fairy. Psychic is associated with the mind, telekinesis, telepathy, and seeing the future, while Fairy is closely associated with happiness, healing, light, and sweet treats. But where the two types tend to overlap is the concept of magic. Magic Coat, Magic Room, and Magic Powder are all psychic type moves, but Magical Torque is the Fairy Team Starmobile's signature move. Magic Bounce is an ability mainly given to psychic types, but with some fairy types sprinkled in, while Magic Guard is divided almost equally between psychic and fairy types. Fairies themselves are magical creatures, while the psychic type literally has Pokemon named Abra, Kadabra, Alakazam but the strongest evidence of this overlap are the Psychic Fairy Pokemon. As we discussed, rock and ground have a lot in common, and there are nine rock ground Pokemon. There are also exactly nine Psychic Fairy type Pokemon. I cover all this to make the point that if a Psychic type Pokemon's main focus is magic, as opposed to the mind or telekinetic powers, then it would also make sense as a Fairy type Pokemon. So since we're looking for fire fairy type Pokemon, we can then look at fire psychic type Pokemon to see if there are any we can convert. And to me, the clearest candidate is Delphox. It's heavily inspired by witches or wizards, even wielding a wand, and its hidden ability is literally magician. Its evolution move is Mystical Fire, which is learned by 16 different fairy type Pokemon, which is one more than the number of psychic Pokemon that can learn it. It can also learn Dazzling Gleam, one of the two main fairy type special attacks. It can't learn Moonblast, but no fire types can. You know, the, the sun is kind of more their thing. Also, since filming this, look what was announced. While it's very few dex entries discuss its psychic powers and future sight, I feel like those were influenced by the fact that it's a psychic type Pokemon. I personally feel like Delphox would have made sense as a fire fairy type Pokemon from the very beginning. Another fire psychic type we could change to fire fairy is Victini. Fairy types are often said to bring good feelings, such as Togetic bringing happiness, Sylveon bringing soothing energy, Comfey bringing relaxation and healing, or Milkery bringing success and good fortune. To, uh, patisseries specifically, uh, but it still counts. But then you have Victini, whose whole thing is that it brings victory. This Pokemon brings victory. What did I just say? It is said that trainers with Victini always win, regardless of the type of encounter. I don't know about you, but to me, that sounds like something a fairy type would do. Plus it also learns Dazzling Gleam and Mystical Fire like Delphox. But the strongest evidence of all is that it has fairy wings on its butt. It's got so much fairiness that it's coming out of its ass. All jokes aside, I feel strongly that if fairy had existed in Gen 5, Victini would be a fire fairy type Pokemon. The only reason it's not today is because when they changed Pokemon to being fairy type, the only type they overwrote was normal. The last potential fire fairy type I wanna cover is Ninetales. Now, unlike Delphox and Victini, it doesn't have a psychic typing we would need to convert to fairy, but it doesn't need one. Its gold entry says, some legends claim that each of its nine tails has its own unique type of special mystic power. Then its crystal entry, it is said to live a thousand years, and each of its tails is loaded with supernatural powers. Then in Alpha Sapphire, legend has it that nine tails came into being when nine wizards possessing sacred powers merged into one. For a long time, fans have used dex entries like these, plus the fact it learns several psychic type moves, to claim that nine tails should have been fire psychic type the whole time. I gotta say, I agree, it would make sense as a fire psychic type, but it would also make sense as a fire fairy type. The thing is made of wizards, its other form is a fairy type, and it, it, it doesn't get dazzling gleam, but it does get mystical fire. So those are my three candidates for fire fairy. But what about ground fairy? Well, let me tell you, it's, uh, 
It's a lot harder. The only ground psychic Pokemon are Baltoy and Claydol, and it doesn't feel right to change them to fairy. They're kind of just self-powered telekinetic floating statues, which has much more of a psychic vibe than a fairy one. Then the rock fairy type Pokemon, Carbink and Deancey, could not be changed to ground, since they're covered in crystals, which are distinctly a rock type attribute. I also couldn't find any ground type Pokemon with mystical or sparkly powers, and certainly none associated with dessert. Deserts, on the other hand. For a bit, I thought I was doomed for this combo, but then I remembered the ground type Pokemon criteria I mentioned earlier in this video. Dealing with dirt or soil specifically, dealing with softer forms of earth like mud or sand, or doing a lot of digging. And what's an animal well known for doing a lot of digging? Dogs. Snubble, Granbull, Fido, and Doxbun could be ground fairy type. I will say my logic goes beyond just these are dogs and dogs dig though. Snubble and Granbull actually learn the most well-known ground type moves, dig, bulldoze, and earthquake. Yes, you heard me correctly. Somehow Snubble learns earthquake. Fido and Doxbun also learn several ground type moves, mud slap, mud shot, dig, and stomping tantrum. But my justification for them goes a step further. They're based on dachshunds, a breed of dog, quote, bred to scent, chase, and flush out badgers and other burrow dwelling animals. Their breed exists to go underground. Because of that, I think Ground Fairy makes more sense on Fido and Doxbun than it does on Snubble and Granbull. However, I think there's a case to be made for all of these fairy dogs being ground fairy dogs, which I'm realizing now that I said it is very close to combining groundhogs and prairie dogs, neither of which are dogs. Next up is Bug Dragon. I think the main reason this type combo doesn't exist yet is because it's combining two types that describe the Pokemon's anatomy. Bugs are insects or arachnids usually, while dragons are reptiles most of the time. So combining them is combining two very different animals, and I can see why that could be tricky. Except there are already Pokemon out there that do just that. The most well-discussed ones are of course Vibrava and Flygon. The whole line is based on Antlions, which is a type of insect. Trapinch is the larva stage, while Vibrava and Flygon are the adult stages. All three of them would make sense as bug types, so much so that ground bug might have been the more logical typing for the whole group. Flygon learns eight different bug type moves and is even in the bug egg group. However, they have the dragon typing, which Bulbapedia theorizes could be due to, well, wordplay. Oftentimes, the adult antlion and dragonfly are confused with one another, and Flygon could draw inspiration from both. In fact, some species of dragonflies are commonly called sand dragons, which could account for Vibrava and Flygon's type combination. Regardless of the reason for the dragon typing, I'm not taking it away, because it works in my favor here. Honestly, Vibrava and Flygon are some of the few Pokemon that would make sense with three types, dragon, ground, and bug. So much like Sableye, I think it makes sense to just select any two of those, such as Bug and Dragon. Speaking of wordplay, Yan Mega could have also been a Bug Dragon type. This one actually is a dragonfly, but unlike its pre-evolution Yanma, it looks draconic with fangs and spikes. It's also inspired by the Mega Neuromonyi, a prehistoric species that was basically a huge dragonfly. This matters because many dragon type Pokemon are inspired by prehistoric creatures, such as Arctobax, Mega Sceptile, or Kamo O, and several like Dreepy, Roaring Moon, Coridon, Dracovish, and Tyrantrum are explicitly prehistoric. The biggest counter to the Yan Mega being Bug Dragon argument is that the Japanese word for dragonfly, which I believe is pronounced Tonbo, has nothing to do with dragons. But if that's the case, how did Flygon end up as a dragon type Pokemon? Also, I should probably mention Yan Mega doesn't learn a single dragon type move, but we're just gonna skip over that and move on. Another bug type Pokemon that I think could also make sense as a dragon type that is, I'll admit, more of a stretch, Armaldo. I already think Armaldo should not be a rock type. 
It's annoyed me that for a while, all fossil Pokemon were rock types simply because they were revived from fossils. Which is so annoying. The ancient ecosystems were diverse. They weren't all stony. They have thankfully stopped doing that, introducing the Galar fossil Pokemon and the Scarlet Paradox Pokemon. However, this does mean that older fossil Pokemon ended up as rock types when a lot of them did not need to be. Armaldo is one of those Pokemon since nothing about its biology has anything to do with rocks. So instead of rock, I could see dragon making sense. Armaldo is somewhat dinosaur-like and uh, well, uh, admittedly, that's all I got. I'll say bug water makes a lot more sense, but like, come on, if they can make a Lolan Exeggutor a dragon type, they can make Armaldo a dragon type. Next is Naganadal. It is clearly a dragon, but it has bug-like features. Its abdomen is much like a wasp's, and its shiny is actually black and yellow like a yellow jacket. It also learns six different bug type attacks. To be clear, poison also makes sense. The thing is a purple needle, like pretty spot on. I just think it's kind of like the Flygon and Sableye situation where three types would make sense and you could just pick two of them, bug and dragon. The final Pokemon I want to discuss for bug dragon are Weirder. Those are Gumi, Sligu, and Gudra. These dragon type Pokemon are based partially on slugs, evidenced by their conversion to snails in their Hisuian form. At first, I thought this was a clear cut, easy reason to justify making them bug dragon type, but then I realized most slugs aren't bugs. Almost every bug type Pokemon is based on an arthropod a phylum that includes insects, arachnids, and crustaceans. Meanwhile, slugs are part of another phylum called mollusca, which includes bivalves like clams, cephalopods like octopi, or gastropods like slugs. It's a completely different group, and that's demonstrated by slug or snail Pokemon not being bug type. The only exceptions to this are Shelmet and Excelgore, which Bulbapedia claims could be partially based on slugs or snails. They're not as obviously slugs or snails though, hence why converting the Gudra line to bug dragon type doesn't feel quite right. I feel like you could justify it, but I think the earlier ones I mentioned are better fits. Next, we move on to the normal combos. Normal ice, normal rock, normal steel, and normal bug. These are by far the lamest, so uh, that's why I'm knocking them all out at once. The normal type's center focus is being the type for just regular animals. Is it just a rat? Normal type. Is it just a bull? Normal type. Is it just a cyberspace programmed virtual creature? that looks like a duck, normal type. We can see this in action by looking at normal type Pokemon that also have an elemental type. They still have aspects of their elemental type, but they look more like a regular animal than other members of their elemental type. Sawsbuck is close to a regular deer outside of its antlers. Heliolisk looks much like a regular lizard. Pyroar is a regular lion outside of its mane. And Babarel is just a beaver. The small of line are the exception to this regular animal rule, uh, which is frankly why I still don't understand why they're normal type. So in short, to deal with these normal type pairings, we simply have to pick Pokemon of the other type that is close to a regular animal. For normal ice, Cub Chew and Bear Tick are the clear winners. While they obviously have some differences, at the end of the day, they are just modified polar bears, like how Pyroar is a modified lion. Satoddle and Satitan could work as well. Definitely not as well, uh, cause they're land walking whales, which are not real animals, um, but whales are, so maybe? Also, I wanna give a quick shout out to Dugong here. Definitely looks like a very regular animal, um, but it's already got the water type and it does swim a lot. I just, I, I wanted to bring it up. For normal steel, Cufant and Caparaja are the best candidates. They're not as close to regular elephants as I would like for this, you know, cause they're green and orange, uh, but I didn't really have better options. The closest one is Galarian Meowth, but regular Meowth is already a normal type. Orthworm might work as well, but adding ground type to it makes a lot more sense than normal. For normal rock, rock rough and lichen rock are the easy choices. Rock rough in the midday form are basically regular dogs wearing stony collars. Side note, I wanna mention, I think the alternate forms for lichen rock would have been a lot more interesting if they had different types. Midnight form has very dark type vibes, so we could have done rock dark for that, then rock normal for midday, and then maybe rock fighting for dusk. You know, now that I think about it, that would have been dope. That would have been the first rock fighting type outside of Terrakian. 
Cloth is another one I considered for rock normal since it's pretty close to a regular crab that's just made of rock, but if it were to get a secondary typing, bug would make more sense. Dwebble and Crustle already set the precedent for crabs being bug types, so that would make more sense for cloth than normal. Speaking of bug, that brings us to normal bug, which makes things tricky with the whole regular animal thing because bugs are regular animals. Gosh, these types that have to deal with a Pokemon's anatomy instead of elemental powers make things a lot more difficult. I do have another plan though. You see, the normal type is associated with just regular animals, but it has another attribute, sound. Sound doesn't have a type of its own, so sound-based things are often lumped in with the normal type. Of the 32 moves that the ability Soundproof blocks, just over half of them are normal type moves, including Boom Burst, Hyper Voice, Perish Song, Roar, and Screech. Pokemon whose central design focus is sound or music often end up normal type, like Exploud, Jigglypuff, Meloetta, Obstagoon, or Chatot. There are four bug type Pokemon whose design focus is sound related and who don't already have another secondary type, would make sense as bug normal types. The obvious candidates are Krikatot and Krikatoon. Krikatot is a little musician that makes xylophone noises with its antenna, and Krikatoon is a mustachioed cricket that crosses its knife-like arms in front of its chest to compose melodies ad lib. It also literally has tune in its name. They are by far the most sound-focused bugs and therefore shoo-ins for the bug normal type. Honestly, so much so that I think it's weird that they didn't make them bug normal from the beginning. Well. To be fair, prior to Gen 4, there was one Pokemon that was a normal type paired with a type that was not flying, and it was Giraffarig. And then they added Babarel, and then that was it for a while. So I guess they just weren't comfortable with that yet. And that brings us to our final unused type combo, Ice Poison. And oh boy, I saved this one for last because it is the worst one, by far could not find anything good. The problem arises because poison and ice are very, uh, for lack of a better word, centralizing types. If you read a poison type Pokemon's dex entry, chances are very high it will discuss the Pokemon's toxins, smell, venom, or whatever else. The same is true for an ice type, but swap in discussing its freezing breath or cold skin, etc. In other words, most of the time when a Pokemon is poison or ice type, that becomes the focal point of what it does. At least after Gen 1. Gen 1 had a lot of Pokemon they just threw poison and ice onto that didn't really need them. I looked through all of the ice types and all of the poison types, and I didn't feel like any of them were good fits to gain the other type. None of the poison types really used ice, and none of the ice types really used poison. I mean, yeah, sure, there were ice types that learned poison moves and vice versa, but as I said earlier, I don't like it when the move pool is the only justification. There's gotta be something else. In the end, the best candidates I could find, which I wanna be clear are not good ones, are Hisui and Sneasel and Sneasler. They come from Pokemon that are already ice type and actually inhabit the same biomes. Sneasler's Legends Dex entry says, because of Sneasler's virulent poison and daunting physical prowess, no other species could hope to best it on the frozen highlands. It's related to an ice type and it lives in cold places. And that's all I got. They clearly wanted to make it distinct from original Sneasel and Weavile because Hisui and Sneasel and Sneasler do not learn any ice type moves, not one. In short, I think we would really need a new Pokemon to fulfill ice poison. But hey, whiffing on just one of the nine is a pretty good percentage. Thanks so much for watching with an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon who help support my channel independent of fluctuating YouTube ad rates. The link to that is in the description below. Also, if you want to check out some more of my fun Pokemon content and a bit of merch still left at mnjtvmerch.com, the links are on the screen here. But that is all I have for now. So until next time, big fans, gotta catch them all!